Hi folks, it's Thibaut Van Damme here with another YouTube video. And for those of you who are not familiar with my channel, I am a DIY singer-songwriter and guitar tutor based in Southeast London. Today I'm very excited to be on my channel continuing my series about practical guitar and music theory. Specifically, we're going to be continuing with our framework, the cage system, a video that I made sort of a few videos ago. It is a framework that we can learn how to play open major chords and minor chords, but also we learn how to move those chords around on the fretboard without necessarily needing to know the names of the chords we're playing. So it's a very powerful thing. It's unique to guitar. You can't do it on piano or saxophone or whatever. So definitely stay tuned. Today specifically, we're going to be learning how to play the C major chord in a practical way. If this sounds interesting to you, please consider liking the video. Please consider subscribing to the channel. It's the best way to stay up to date with the videos I make. And it continues to motivate me to keep updating the videos. So thank you to everyone that does subscribe. Let's get into it. So I have some notes in front of me uh, on my phone, um, but the notes that I'm gonna be using today specifically refer to how to correctly fret the guitar. And the reason I'm referring to this is because as throughout all these videos in the cage system, with every, with every chord we look at, C major, A major, A minor, we will have options as to which fingers we choose to use and how we effectively will fret these chords. And so when it comes to C major, you will have different options as to which fingers to use. This is because it depends sort of where you're starting and where you're going. Um, and so what I'll point out is that there is a more traditional way of playing the C major chord using certain fingers. And then if you actually want to use the C major chord at the end, what I'll do is I'll show you how to actually fret the C major chord with which fingers uh, so that you're actually able to move around the chord to then play C major. So let's get into it. So to fret a, a C major chord, we have to remember that just like I said in the last video about triads, um, how to structure the chord. So I'll just tell you how to actually play the chord and then I'll point out which components of this chord that I'm fretting right now, how to identify which ones are sort of which elements, which one's the root, the perfect fifth, and then the major third. You might notice that when we actually strum this chord that there is a string we're omitting. We're omitting that low E string. I'm muting it, but you don't have to. As long as you are detailed in the way that you're picking and you deliberately avoid strumming that low E. Um, and you can tell, I just strummed it right there. It doesn't have an enormous impact on the sound of the instrument uh, and the chord really in the end, but it's worth keeping in mind because if you want ultimate clarity, it's one of those little details that does make a small but meaningful difference. So going back to the C major chord, the fingers we're gonna be using, and I'll be referring to them like this throughout the remainder of the video series about the cage chords, is basically your index finger is finger one, followed by your middle finger, finger two, ring finger, finger three, and finally pinky, finger four. And then not throughout the cage system, but perhaps later at a later point, we might use thumb. So I'll just say it's your thumb, um, but usually avoid your thumb. And just to keep in mind how to correctly fret, we wanna make sure that as we go through each of these fingers and placing them on the fretboard, that our fingers are as perpendicular to the fretboard as possible. So we don't want to have, as you can see here, our fingers like this. We want them almost to be creating a perpendicular connection with the instrument. You'll also notice, if you look close, that I'm not actually using my nail. I'm using the tip of my finger. And the example I gave in my past video about how to correctly fret, which if you haven't seen, go check it out, there'll be a link. Um, I like to draw a smiley face on my finger. So if you can imagine that the pads of your fingers, the soft parts, um, if you could imagine that they had a face on them and they were all looking at you when you looked at your hand like this, um, what you want to do is you want the strings to rest on, in a sense, the crowns, not the faces, but the tops of the heads, the crowns of these fingers. And this is a way to not only get a clearer sound out, but it actually makes fretting a lot more comfortable. It's a lot easier. And this is because if you think about the way that your fingers are actually structured, think about the direction that the bones go. If you saw a skeleton, especially because it's, you know, spooky, spooky season, we've got Halloween coming up. If you think about a skeleton, right, fingers are pretty directional, right? Like if you point the finger at someone, it's pointed that way. So think about this skeleton sort of shape and the fact that bones actually go this way. Um, I know that you could think about a bone sort of just existing as an object, but if you try sort of squeezing here, there's so much more padding and, 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 and fatty tissue or whatever it is, skin. Um, you can't really get a firm sort of, uh, sort of 
uh, grip kind of on the string. What you need to do is sort of take advantage of the directionality of the bones in your fingers. Um, and this is sort of why I give this example of this sort of face and the crown and, you know, you want to wear the string on the top of the fingers, not on the face. So if you find that you're getting buzzes or anything like that, just check your fingers, look at your fingers, see where the lines are. If the lines are on the tops and the pads, then maybe you need to sort of adjust slightly so that you can see that they appear here. Another thing I'll point out is that sometimes on occasion, and this happens with me actually even now, um, sometimes my index finger, the nail actually makes contact with the string, especially with the C chord. This is because if you actually look at the way I fret the C, hopefully you can see the C chord, you can see that I actually have to angle my finger slightly. And by angling it slightly in this way, I actually end up creating kind of a diagonal, sort of a crossing point. And if you look at the mark on my finger, you'll see it actually doesn't go flat across the top of my finger, it actually goes diagonal. Uh, and that diagonal sort of movement sometimes crosses over your, or crosses over my index finger's nail. Uh, so as a way of avoiding getting any nail buzz or muting or any complicated sounds, even just before this video, I had my trusty nail file on hand. I use the nail file. There's a whole way to file your nails that I might even make a video about that just because it's really important. And as your nails get longer, you'll see they become pretty pronounced. Uh, I, I look like, I mean, I don't even know what I look like, like Sar Saruman or something with my super long nails, but I maintain my nails. Um, and actually it's really great. It's also good for my mental health. It's a type of self care for me. Um, but I do also file these nails down, uh, even the fretting, fretting fingers. So going back to the C chord, the traditional way of fretting C is to use our third finger, our ring finger on the third fret of the A string. So we have A, we have A sharp, we have B and then C. That's using the chromatic scale. Then after that on the string just below, on the D string, we're gonna place our middle finger. Uh, and that will be on the note E. So D, D sharp, and then E. Then we're gonna play the open G string. And this actually already has constructed our triad. So like I mentioned in my last video about triads, um, we have our root, which is C. It is the lowest note we played. Then we have this note here, which is E. E is our major third, actually. So this is a good example where the major third and the perfect fifth, they don't appear in a sequential order like you'd normally expect. Like, you might expect the perfect fifth, then the major third. In this case, we have root, major third, and then finally, the G is actually our perfect fifth. And the way we can check our work about this uh, idea and to make sure that the notes are actually what we think they are, is to actually go through the chromatic scale with each and every note. Um, but this is just the theoretical side of it. This is the practical way of playing the C major chord. And then finally, we end up with this open B, the B string, open B string, which is, you could think of as the second string. And if you play this chord just like this, you actually play a variation of the C major chord called C major seven. This is because C and B, B above a C is a major seventh away from the C. So actually to play a real C or like not a real C, but uh, like a traditional C, C major without the major seventh, we actually need to play also finally the first fret of the B string, see? And hopefully, I know that this isn't ideal, maybe I should get like a GoPro or something to demonstrate this a little bit better, but we end up with this kind of structure where we have our index finger on the B string, we have the open A string, uh, no, sorry, the open G string just below, then just below that, the second fret on the D string, finally, the third fret on the A string, which produces C, we have E and G, and then finally C again. And so C in this case is actually an octave. You can hear that too, can't you? They sound the same, interchangeable almost. But finally, we actually, because we strum straight through, we end up hearing also the open E string. And if we go back and look at what each of those notes were, the E, that open E was our major third. So when we actually strum a C major chord through, we actually end up hearing our root, our major third, our fifth, our octave, and then finally we hear another major third. So because it just so happens the E appears at the top and that's another major third, we end up hearing just a supplementary interval. It doesn't end up affecting 
uh, the chord in a way that we would say, oh, I don't know about that. If, for instance, we hold down uh, G though, we end up with a different sound. This is considered what I would think of as a variation. To play this would be playing another G, which, as we already discussed, is actually another perfect fifth. So this is considered a variation of the chord. Um, and it sounds slightly different too. So our traditional C major chord, we have ring, index, uh, no, sorry, our, our ring, middle, then index. C major. Now it's worth pointing out now, at this point in the video, that there is another way to fret this chord. And I have to say, starting with C major is a little bit ugh, not ideal because the C major chord is actually quite complex to be able to play to begin with. Um, but then to play it with different fingers and move it around with the bar can be challenging. But I'll just show you which fingers you would choose nonetheless in case you are at that level. So <clears throat> another way of playing this, I said before was three, two, one three, two, one, in those fingers in those order, uh, in that order. But another way of fretting this would be to think about leaving your index finger available. The reason we always leave our index finger available when we do bar chords is because we actually need the index finger to play the bar. And just because of, by virtue of the order of our fingers, the index finger is the one finger that's sort of furthest away from the others that allows us to actually produce a bar without actually, um, intervening with our ability to use the remaining three fingers. And we end up using these remaining three fingers to then produce any other chord we want. So an E shape or a G shape. So index finger is actually very important when it comes to bars. And honestly, I couldn't imagine doing a bar chord without my index finger. I wouldn't use, for instance, my, my middle finger, I think ever to pr produce a bar chord. So if we know that we need to keep our index finger available, then that means that actually we use our pinky, our fourth finger, four, three, and then two. So pinky, then ring, then middle to produce our C shape. And this is a bit tricky, especially because we start to use our pinky. Oh wait, oops, there we go. So we have our C major chord, um, but instead I'm using my pinky, ring, and then middle, which keeps our index finger available. And then here is the beauty of the cage system. That is a C major. This is a C sharp major. This is a D major, weirdly, because we actually are gonna learn how to play the D major chord as an open chord as well. And then D sharp major. Now, some of the troubleshooting you might need and some of the problems you might run into when playing the C major chord is the space. Getting a clear sound out of the open G string. So we have our A, D, and G, and B strings. And the problem you might run into is the space that falls between this index and then that uh, middle finger. That little space there. We should be able to produce the open G string uh, as a sound. And then therefore, um, get that clear sound out. You might run into that issue. And if you find that you're getting a problem uh, getting that sound out, I would check sort of the, the pads of your fingers. See if they're leaning forward too much. I found that a lot of my students sometimes um, that struggle specifically with this chord, it's because their finger actually leans in a bit like this. And so you might see that the pads of their fingers actually mute the string. So we have to sort of rectify that. We have to fix that. Like that. So I would just start by looking at your middle finger and seeing if the pad of your finger is actually blocking or, or overlapping with that open G string. Um, then I would take my index finger and once I'd loosen that space up, once I'd loosen that space up, then that's when I would actually um, introduce my index finger onto that first fret of the B string. And then finally, third fret of the A string to play the C. And there is our C major chord. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If you did, please consider liking the video. Please consider subscribing to the channel. It's the best way to stay up to date with the new content I'm making. And of course, it motivates me to keep making these videos. I will be making videos about the rest of the chords in the cage system. I hope that they'll be sort of similar to this, maybe not quite as long, but I know that C major can be a challenge for some students, especially because of that little space. Uh, let me know if you have any difficulties in the comments below playing this chord. 
Uh, let me know what was helpful if you can about this video uh, or where there's space for improvement. I'm always looking to improve. Thanks for watching. Thanks to the people that do subscribe and I'll see you at the next one. Ciao for now.